I made tiny science bag changes in the way I eat food to get rid of lethargy after meals, to feel better and more focused, and slow down my aging. Here's how exactly you can do it too while also losing weight without any strict diets if that is what your goal is. The principle behind it is balancing our glucose levels. When we eat something, our body digests it and releases energy or glucose. Different foods releases different amounts of energy for varied times. Proteins and fats releases glucose slowly and hence have a low glycemic index. Whereas carbohydrates and sugars immediately increases our glucose levels and hence have a high glycemic index. What's wrong with glucose increasing? It's only energy, no? When our glucose level rises, we'd most definitely feel good. But around two hours later, something very interesting happens. Our liver releases insulin, which stores the glucose in our blood as glycogen or fat. So the glucose levels, which were once rising, are now dropping crazy. And this causes a crash. And when this happens, we feel extremely lethargic. Our mood goes to shit. We feel hungry more often, our immune system is hindered, cognitive functioning is impaired, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. In the long run, this process causes acne and skin problems, heart issues, and among other things, makes you age faster. All this sounds scary, right? So does it mean that we have to give up on the foods we like just to avoid these glucose spikes? Thankfully, there's a way around. The sweet spot is to eat food in a smarter way which allows us to enjoy all these foods while also balancing our sugar levels. Do you ever eat fruits before meals? Or snack on sweets? Or sip on your favorite sweetened beverage throughout the day? This is a sure short way of experiencing a glucose spike followed by a crash. We can take the exact same things in a meal, rearrange its order, and decrease the glucose spike we experience from it by 73%. The order is this, fibers first, proteins and fats next, followed by sugars and carbohydrates in the end. So a meal which starts with a salad has healthy fats and proteins and ends with a dessert will give you a much less of a glucose spike as compared to a meal which starts with sweet or carbohydrates and has no healthy fats or proteins. If you feel like snacking, try avoiding sweet snacks and pick savory ones which comprises of fiber, protein, or healthy fats. If you really feel like eating a sweet snack, even eating protein, fats, and fiber before it will dent the glucose spike. What if it's too late, you had a heavy meal in the wrong order, or you ended up snacking on chocolate? There's something you can still do. Ayurveda suggests walking 100 steps after meals. The primary motive behind that is to aid digestion. But as it turns out, using our muscles after we eat something reduces the glucose spike we get from it. For me, post-dinner walks are a non-negotiable. But within an hour of eating, you can do anything like cycling, calf raises, push-ups, squats, washing utensils, or even tidying your room. Anything is better than just sitting on our asses and letting the glucose levels rise. I personally have benefited a ton from just these two hacks. The book Glucose Revolution talks about it in more detail. So give these two hacks a shot. You'll notice the difference at the very first try and your body will thank you in the long run. What's in it for me? The goal we're trying to aim for, to manage our glucose levels in order to feel better look better and live longer. The concrete action steps that would help us reach there. Eat food in the right order and cover our favorite snacks with protein, fats and fiber. Second, movement after eating. And finally, summary. When it comes to balancing our sugar levels, there's another unexpected savior. Our breath. Slow and calm breathing, among other benefits, also lowers down our blood glucose levels. I've made a video on breath. To watch that, you can click here.